going on guys so today I just want to talk to you a little bit about those of you who are about to get into the African cichlid hobby maybe you're like me before I ever had a tank I was watching these videos pretty much daily and was just amazed at the beautiful colors of all the least fish <clears throat> When you're first starting out, you gotta know what's what. Not every single type of fish, but just the main ones that are easily available to you at your big, big box pet stores and things of that nature. And, I mean, uh, just just the tank requirements you know just some just some of the simple basic things that will set you up for success as you can see the boss chasing people around that's one thing you got to get to know cichlid aggression um, so there are peacocks haps and embuna those are the three main types that um most likely you'll be considering when it comes to Africans there are South American cichlids I'm not going to cover a lot of those today I don't have any in my fish room and um, I've kept some in the past but I was just a beginner in the hobby so I put South Americans and Africans together which is taboo for some but um, you know I've seen others make it work but they come from two different places on earth Africa versus South America and their water conditions are much much different Africans love high pH um, and South Americans love lower pH acidic water um, and you can look more of that up yourself but um, I'm just going to skim the surface with that um, but like uh, you see some of these rocks I have in here I have crushed coral you see some little shells and things of that nature all of those things help to raise the pH keep it stable and um, like in some South American tanks you'll see like um, they have the wood and things of that nature and um, that releases chemicals in the water and um, lowers the pH so uh, that's just a rough example of what I'm talking about you can look any of this stuff up but uh, when it comes to Africans I just want to make sure you're prepared and ready for what they'll bring um, African cichlids do good in groups I mean the more you can overstock your tank the better within reason now um, this is assuming you went through the nitrogen cycle and all of those things um, and I covered that in another video which I'll put below but um, this is assuming you've been through all that your tank is cycled and it's ready to go that's what we're assuming and um, at this point <clears throat> so um, first of all you gotta decide what size tank you're gonna get um, it's completely up to you some people start with a 40 breeder some people start with a 29 gallon but just realize that some of these guys get huge um, are a pretty nice size so uh, most of these guys in here full grown will be between 7 to 10 inches some may be a little bigger so um, I might end up putting them in a larger tank down the road um, but that's one thing you want to research your different fish and you know how big they can grow because um, you don't want a 12 inch fish um, spending his life in a 29 gallon that'd be a pretty miserable life and you know you wouldn't like that yourself if you were a fish so um, that's something to think about um, I would say minimum I started out with a 55 gallon when I was just learning and that was plenty enough space for me to uh, learn and do what I had to do um, as as I said, when I first started out, I I, I had South Americans and Africans together. <laughs> I just didn't know any better. But over time, I learned that that wasn't the way. 
Um, and there were some things that happened. The South Americans either couldn't swing it or after a while, the Africans couldn't swing it. And I found myself trying to raise and lower the pH. So I learned the hard way. That's why I'm making this video. Some of you um, who follow my channel and follow my videos, you're experienced fish keepers. This is, uh, you're just here checking out the fish maybe. But um, I, I want to speak to, you know, those who are just starting out. And I don't want to assume everybody just knows how to do this. Um, so as I spoke about the three different types of Africans um, that I'm covering today, there are many different types of fish um, that come from those lakes, those huge lakes in Africa, but um, peacocks, haps, and mbunas. Now, um, I also made the mistake as a beginner keeping mbunas with my Africans, and um, <clears throat> I had what's called a demasonai. They're very beautiful mbunas. They're like um, blue with black stripes, and that's the thing about mbunas. They come colored up very young. Um, they just automatically have color, and that's what draws a lot of people to them, but then you'll hear a lot of people say, man, these fish are aggressive and they were shredding my Africans and I just couldn't figure out why until I did the research. So, um, and Boonas are, and it's funny because they're vegetarian fish. They, they scrape, uh, algae off the rocks in Africa and things of that nature, but they will hold their own and they will fight, you know, and those, those little teeth they have will shred fins, um, and if you are going to keep in bunas, they do well in large groups as well. See, large groups help you to uh, spread out the aggression. And um, I wouldn't say this is a large group in this tank right now. Um, I just started this tank a few weeks ago. So, you know, I have enough in here to spread out the aggression. And, and one thing to also realize is that in every tank, you will have a boss. Um, so the boss in my tank, where is he at? He's... This is, uh, is it him? I'm trying to think because I have two of the, two of these guys. Um, no, there. He's the boss. He's the boss in my tank. He's like second in command. Um, you get to know he's like third. So you get to know. Um, and those are Ob Ali's or Fry Eyes as they call them. Um, hope I'm saying that right, but I just call them Ali's. They're the OB cichlids, which is, um, you know, it's a hybrid between an Mbuna and um, an African cichlid. And that's another complicated thing, um, the process to getting these fish to come out like that. But, um, and then the third guy I told you who was in charge, he's a redfin borlei. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, where were we? Um, so the scientific term for peacocks is alonacara. Alonacara. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, I don't use these scientific words too much, but um, they are your typical peacocks. Uh, they're very beautiful in color, and um, the males obviously will show up with that color. The females will always be dark and gray. That's another thing. If you're starting to tank. Um, and you have a lot of males because you like the color. A lot of people make mistakes of tossing some females in here. Um, it can just cause for your tank to be upside down because the male is going to be ready to breed and he's going to be extra aggressive. And um, some people make it work, but I'll tell you right now to make your life a lot easier to keep an all male tank. So um, sometimes that involves just looking for color. Other times, if you're getting them small as they continue to grow, it's you want to use a process called venting. Um, and that's where you turn the fish upside down and look at the uh, the sex organs, so to speak. But uh, it's just two holes you look for. And I'll show you a picture of that um, here while we continue to talk about that. But um, the male's holes are both the same size, essentially. And I'm just saying this in a way that, you know, everybody can grasp it. And the female has two different size holes. Um, one is the anal, and then the other one is um, the hole for uh, eggs to be released. So the female has two different sizes. One is small, one is big. And you'll see that in the picture. So I hope that helps some people out because I've gotten questions like, Bending, how do I do that? 
and um, I've had to do it all the time. Uh, a certain fish company just sent me what was supposed to be males paid arm and a leg and um, one was a male and one was a female and they swore up and down, are you sure? We vent them, we chuck them, blah, 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 and they didn't. And it wasn't done properly, so I was able to turn that fish over under the light and say, hey, no, this is a female. So you gotta learn this so it's another weapon in your arsenal. When companies do their halfway job and you know send you something that you didn't pay for by example or you buy it from a random store and you're not sure because it's so young when these fish are young a lot of times it's hard to tell unless they come into their dominance early and some fish do come into their dominance early um, I've had some fish that do and they color up at a real small age so that's another thing um, another type of African is the haps, haplochromis. Um, so we spoke about Mbuna. We spoke about briefly about peacocks. Yeah, peacocks. Um, Alanacara is another is the scientific name for peacocks. But um, now we're talking about the haps. They are predator fish. They're shaped like torpedoes. This Ali is what you would call a hap, haplochromis. Um, the Venustus back here that's a haplochromis um, they are predator fish and um, in the wild they are piscivores where they hunt other fish smaller fish so if um, as these guys grow in size if you think you're gonna put a fish in there that's small enough that can fit in their mouth forget about it um, that fish will go missing overnight and you'll never see him again. He'll be in one of these guys' stomachs. So um, that's a mistake I made as a beginner as well. I'm like, where's that new fish at? He was starting to get some color. He had some promise, and now he's just gone. Did he jump out of the tank? Nope, he got eight. So um, that's one thing you definitely want to watch out for. You want to keep your fish around the same size starting out, or um, the little guy just might up and disappear. And there will be no search party that could find them. Um, oh, another thing we must talk about is um, lookalikes. If you think you're going to put two colored up males that are exactly the same, like two Borley eyes or two Venustis in a tank together, um, there's going to be a struggle for dominance um, depending on the size and the temperament of the fish now some people can get away with that I'm not going to say every situation is impossible but uh, there will be a struggle for dominance and um, you, it could be paying dearly fish injuring themselves uh, which could lead to bacterial infections in their wounds um, and there's all kind of medications that can help with that but uh, you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Just fish that have similar color are going to fight a lot because uh, they 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 see the other fish as their opposition, their competition, and um, they rarely have I seen them mesh well, um, unless like in my frontosa tanks, for instance, I have. I usually keep two males, one will be a dominant male, one will be a subdom, and then several females. That's what you call more like a breeding group if you're trying to breed fish. And um, that's the way it could be cohesive because you have females there. And um, it can spread out some of their aggression, but I've had breeding groups where the dominant male beat the crap out of uh, the subdom male, you know, so. Uh, you know that's just one thing to watch for uh, variety is in the colors so try to get fish that aren't the same color when it comes to these Africans try to mix it up and if you are going to get some of the same color I mean again you want to have you know I don't want to put a distinct number on it but if you have seven to ten fish to twelve fish in the tank you might be alright because it might spread out the aggression so uh, that's a very that's a very important point I wanted to make. Um, but uh, I don't want to talk you guys here off. I do want to show you my younger tank. I have some stuff going on in there. Um, 
I have some Madoka White Lips in there. I got some OB Lawanda in there. I'm doing a project with that. I got a male, nice male, and um, some females. Shout out to Ron Cichlitz. Um, hooked me up with that. So I'll let you look at these guys a little more. And if you got any questions, put them down below. I just want to set you up for success if you're starting your first tank. One final thing I wanted to add before we get out of here is um, feeding your African cichlids. Um, everybody has their own idea or their own experiences of what the best food is. And um, I'm not endorsed by any of these companies in any way right now. So uh, all I can tell you is what I feed and then you do your own research. But uh, feeding is crucial. Um, feeding, overfeeding can turn your tank upside down. Um, a hungry fish is a happy fish. A lot of times you will see time and time again, if your fish stop eating, you have a problem. Um, if you put food, fish food in the water and all the fish swim up to eat, except for one or two or whatever fish, you got a problem. And, um, there are various things that those problems could be, but uh, overfeeding um, time and time again can cause more problems than not. Um, when the fish are small, like very, very small, um, you want to do a light feed, possibly daily. But um, as they grow larger, I mean, out in the wild, they don't eat every day. You could probably go every other day. Um, or if you're going to feed them daily, then make sure you have a reset day and give them a break. You know, uh, my reset day would usually be a Sunday. And on that Sunday, I would do tank cleanings and everything of that nature. But, um, yeah, just watch. Um, I, I, I go by whatever they can eat within a minute or so. If they can clear it out, then you're doing okay. But um, if you feed them and there's food flying all around the tank for several minutes, um, you're probably overfeeding. And that's just what I learned doing this. Um, I feed all of my fish, even my wild caught fish, uh, North Fin. And uh, I've never had a problem with it. It's, it's a lighter food in my opinion. It's less waste. Um, so... You can do your homework on that, but um, Norfin has never steered me wrong. So um, just look into it and uh, figure out what's best for you. Um, some people like to soak their pellets before they feed their fish. I personally do the Norfin flakes. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's up to you. I, I've, I've had better success in my own personal opinion with flakes than pellets. Um, it's a little lighter and um, it goes a long way but uh, I just wanted to add that important tip there overfeeding 
will lead to lots of problems. Don't do it. I mean, I know you love to see them eat, and, and, and these fish will eat until their bellies are about to explode. That doesn't mean that it's a good thing, and it could come back to kick you later. So, um, as you can see in the back, I use the Heiger heaters. It tells me the temperature of my water. For these guys, you want to keep it 78 to about 82. Some people go 84, I think. But uh, yeah, that's the range I usually keep it at. Um, and again, different fish require different things. I'm just going over African cichlids because uh, that's what I keep in. You know, that's what a lot of people have questions about here. So uh, you got any other questions, drop them down below. I know I'm probably not covering everything, but um, I don't want to chew your ear off. I just wanted to bring you a few things that can help you. This is not one of those big top tip videos. Um, I have a lot of knowledge, but um, we can all learn something every day. So uh, if I can share whatever I learned over the years from all my mistakes with you, I'm happy to do that. And um, you may come with a question down below that I didn't even think to include in this video. And I would love that. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tank on and uh, thanks for your time, guys. Always appreciate it. Front Tosa for life. Signing out.